in, in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Heavenly Father, as we gather here today as one family to listen to the word of God given to us by Brother Vincent, let your Holy Spirit open the eyes of our hearts and our mind to receive your word. Your word, O Lord, is an incorruptible seed. And therefore, your word will always come to pass as in Isaiah 55, 11. Your word is the truth, Lord. Your word, with the help of the Holy Spirit, will enable us to overcome every obstacle and every, and, and, and we shall receive every victory over every situation and circumstances in our life. And for this, we praise and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Caroline. Thank you so much for that beautiful thank prayer. You. And my dear sisters, a warm welcome to you all. So we have been studying about the Holy Spirit in the last few days. And if you see, the Holy Spirit is the one who is ultimately going to direct us every single day of our life. You know, without the Holy Spirit, it is absolutely impossible for us to live the Christian life. There is no Christian life without the Holy Spirit. And today in the body of Christ, you know, there is so many people who profess themselves as Christian. They profess themselves as believers of the Lord Jesus Christ. But, you know, it's only superficial. It's not really a relationship. It's no something as, you know, you really knowing the Lord. And therefore, one of the most important things is to teach people that unless they have truly been born again, they truly desire the word of God. When the word of God, you know, is being taught or when the word of God is being proclaimed or for that matter, their own personal desire for God's word is something that is going to happen only when we are truly born again. And we have been studying the last time, I believe we were studying on um, Acts chapter 10 verses, uh, Acts chapter 10, I think it was verses, uh, verse number, Acts chapter 2, I believe, verses, verse number 16. So let's go there. Acts chapter 2, verse number 16. And it says, but this is what which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So what was this that was spoken by the prophet Joel? What is this? What is that? What is that? In verse number 16, what does that refer to? The Holy Spirit, because the next verse in verse number 17, you will see, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says, the, says God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young man shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. What an awesome promise. What an awesome promise. You know, I, before we go to, you know, verse number 17, it's this definitely verse number 16 is talking about, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. You know, when, when you know, my dear sisters, when Jesus walked on this earth, you know, most people at that time, did not have, you know, the, the concept of revelation knowledge. They never, they never knew what is revelation knowledge. They, they just knew, you know, oh, don't do this, don't do that, do this, do that. It was just a rule book. And so everything that was, their life was all based on rules and regulation. I must not do this. I must not do that. I must not do work on a Sabbath. I must fast. I must pray five times. I must... I must do give the arms to the poor. So it was all about, you know, rules and regulation. And you know, my dear sisters, just like those days, even today, most people don't understand revelation knowledge. 
most people don't understand revelation knowledge you know many people think that you know people you know somebody should teach you that knowledge you must go to probably seminary and somebody in the seminary should teach you this revelation knowledge and you know if you really think about what this word is telling us many of us really don't go into the depth of it verse number 16 is saying but this is that which was spoken by the prophet joel and what prophet joel is already being spoken in 17 so the holy spirit on the day of pentecost was given to the believers those who had believed in the resurrection of jesus see remember one thing on the day of pentecost remember the holy spirit never fell upon everybody there the holy spirit never fell on everybody there whole the holy spirit fell upon the 120 people and therefore only those who had believed in the resurrection only those who had believed that jesus had come to to the earth he had died and he had risen again only those people received the holy spirit you know if 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 you go to acts chapter 1 or beginning of acts chapter 2 i want to just take you beginning of acts chapter 2 look at this and when the day of pentecost was fully come they were all with one accord in one place who is it talking about come on my dear sisters what is whom is it talking about they were all in one accord in one place what are these all disciples the disciples 120 disciples these are not just the the 11 disciples of jesus but these are 120 disciples who were there in the upper room along with mary they were praying because jesus had told everybody not to leave jerusalem but to wait for power to come from high so this all represents the 120 people who were there and mary who was there in that upper room on the day of pentecost so remember then it go let, let's quickly go on to verse number 4 and they were all filled with you know and they appeared unto them cloven tongues verse number 3 as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance now look at verse number 5 and they were dwelling at jerusalem jews devout men out of every nation under heaven and when this and when this was noise noise the broad the multitude came together and were confounded because they that every man heard them speak in his own language so remember even though they were devout men even they were devout jews they were not filled with the holy spirit only the 120 were filled with the holy spirit because jesus had appeared to them Jesus had shown them that he had truly risen from the dead they had encountered the resurrection of Jesus they were truly born again they had accepted Jesus as their lord so the first part happened was they were already born again and we know how a person is born again when in roman chapter 10 verse number 9 and 10 it says whenever somebody believes in their heart that Jesus died on the cross he took their sins he rose again on the third day and he's now seated at the right hand of the father and that person makes Jesus their lord god and savior that person is truly born again and that person receives the spirit of christ but having been born again is not enough you need to receive the holy spirit and this is what was happening on the day of pentecost that those 120 people who were already born again but did not have the power from it on the inside did not have the anointing on the inside remember acts chapter 10 was 38 many of us will remember that a few weeks ago we were studying how god anointed jesus christ of nazareth with holy ghost and with power this holy ghost and power was now being given to the disciples on the day of pentecost are you listening my dear sisters was number yes, four, brother, yes, yes, and yes. they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance which means if you are not truly born again you have not accepted jesus your lord god and savior you have not repented you have not changed your thinking the holy spirit is not you have not received the baptism of the holy spirit you are still lost in your sins you're just going about life without any meaning you're just going through the motions you have no desire for the word you are just you know pushing through life and there are so many people in the body of christ 
who really are not convicted by the Holy Spirit. What does it mean of conviction? Not your individual sins, but that Jesus died for you on the cross. He has made you the son. He has made you the daughter of the heavenly father. And therefore, you know, the moment a person is truly born again, they've received the Holy Spirit, they lose complete sin consciousness. They are only God conscious. They are completely God conscious. There is no concept of, you know, oh, uh, I'm a sinner. Oh, I know my life is so miserable. You never think like this. Because the Holy Spirit is just uplifting you, is giving you so much of encouragement from within. He's helping you to move forward in your life. And that's why, my dear sisters, today, it's, it's really sad. It's really, you know, I would say very unfortunate that just like those days when Jesus was on this earth. Remember, Jesus never had a congregation who were filled with the Holy Spirit. Jesus never ever preached to a congregation that was spirit-filled. Today, in fact, we preachers, can actually share to a congregation who have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Those who are already born again. But when Jesus was preaching on this earth, they were not born again. They were not, you know, filled with the Holy Spirit. And even when the disciples were born again, you will find that he did not even preach to them. He, he stopped preaching to them. And when were the disciples born again? Only after Jesus died and rose again and, they, and, and, and Jesus encountered them before his ascension into heaven. So even during those times after, the after his resurrection and his ascension into heaven, you will see that there is very less teaching of Jesus. That, in fact, you don't see anything that Jesus ever, ever taught his disciples after he rose again from the dead. He just like, you know, he asked Peter, do you love me? He met his disciples. You know, he began to, it was, it was more of depending on the Holy Spirit because it was the Holy Spirit who would do all this job after he came. In fact, Jesus had already told them in John chapter 14, verse number 26. Look at this. John chapter 14, verse number 26. Jesus had told them before he went to the cross. But the comforter, come on, somebody read this for me, please. Let's read this verse. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. And bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So Jesus, when he opens in mouth, his mouth and he says something, he is telling his disciples. When is he telling his disciples, his disciples the statement? Before he went to the cross. Before he actually fulfilled the very mission that he was sent here on this earth of being the sacrificial lamb. So in verse in John chapter 14, this is before he went to the cross. He's telling them the comforter, that is the Holy Ghost, he will be sent by the Father and he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. So, what is the job of the Holy Spirit? His job is to teach you and me. His job is to remind us when we study the word of God. Many times today we are studying the word of God. Now, after about three, four days, you will say, I can't remember. I can't even remember. It's because you never, you were never taught by the Holy Spirit. You were taught by the preacher. Are you listening what I'm saying? If you're depending only on the preacher to teach you, but you're not letting the Holy Spirit teach you, will you remember? Come on, my dear sisters. No. So, how will we remember? We will only remember when the Holy Spirit teaches us all things. He shall teach you all things. He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. So, remember, if the Holy Spirit, if you are spending this one-to-one -one time with the Lord, even though you are listening to a preacher, you're listening to me right now. Maybe you listen to somebody else later. Maybe even after, at the end of the day, you listen to a third preacher. No problem. The preacher's job is to give you the revelation that he received from the Holy Spirit. But are you going to the Holy Spirit yourself? And is the Holy Spirit teaching you? If the Holy Spirit is teaching you, then it is his responsibility, not yours, in order to bring those things to your remembrance. It is the job of the Holy Spirit because he is the one who taught you. But if the Holy Spirit did not teach you, will it ever come to your remembrance? No. 
And if it doesn't come to your remembrance, when the enemy strikes, when the devil comes with negative thoughts, when he comes with temptation, you will never be able to recall those things because the Holy Spirit will not speak to you. And now you are going from bad to worse. You are going in a direction which is totally opposite to the Holy Spirit. And you are not even experiencing the abundant life that Jesus promised. That's a, that's a truth right there the Holy Spirit is teaching us. You know, my dear sisters, remember one thing. In the new covenant, most people, many people, I would say, I won't say most people, many people, they don't understand revelation knowledge. They don't even know what is called as revelation knowledge. And why is that? Because every time they want to be taught by somebody, they want somebody to go, they want to go to seminary, they want to go with somebody with their collar turned backwards, they want somebody, you know, with some, you know, with some knowledge of the word of God. Remember what, there is no difference between you and me if, if we are both born again and we have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. There's no such thing as a preacher knows more or a preacher is closer to God and you are far from the Lord. There is no difference between you and me once we accept Christ and are baptized in the Holy Spirit. I don't know whether you are really being encouraged by this. My dear sisters, please understand this. You do not need any human being to teach you. You do not need to go to semi I mean, seminary to teach you. You don't need to go to seminary to teach you. Because if you really understand this, the comforter, it is the job of the Holy Spirit to teach you. But the Holy Spirit can only teach you when you are truly born again and you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm, I've explained this before, but I'm going to go back to this verse in Roman chapter 8, verse number 9. Look at this. Roman chapter 8, verse number 9. Can somebody read this, please? Roman chapter 8, verse number 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you now. If any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Praise God. So there are two things involved here. Two things involved. There is the spirit of God and then there is the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Christ is the first thing that you must receive and you receive the spirit of Christ when? When does a person receive the spirit of Christ? When we are born again. When we are born again. Praise God. Thank you, Sister Moira. So when we receive the spirit of Christ, when we are truly born again, we accept the sacrifice of Jesus. We believe that he died for me personally on that cross. And I confess it according to Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10. Now I receive the spirit of Christ. But that's not all. I now need to receive the spirit of God. This is when I have to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. This is exactly what happened to the disciples on the day of Pentecost. You know, my dear sisters, please listen to this very carefully. Because, you know, okay, let me put it differently. You know, if you want to make a cake, I don't know, all you sisters have made a cake or some dish at a particular time. And you know, when you have to make a cake, you will mix up everything, the flour, you'll mix up the raisins, you'll mix up the chocolate, you'll mix up, probably if you're making a fruit cake, the fruit together. Then one side, you know, you will keep it with, you know, keep the utensil ready. You'll probably put some butter paper, you'll preheat the oven. You can't, you can't just be doing any, any cake, just put it together, start at the oven and, and, and start making a cake. There is a process involved. There is a systematic process involved. You have to mix it properly. You have to put it into that, into that vessel. Then finally, the pre oven should be preheated. Once it's preheated, you need to set the timing. You need to keep checking probably with a little, you know, with a, with a toothpick or something. You need to just go there to see whether it is all done up and all that. So all this process and finally, you know, when you get the aroma, you don't simply go there and take out the cake. You probably have to check whether it's really cooked in the in Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sorry, my dear sisters. I just got disconnected by the internet. Praise God. Praise God. Okay, so as I was saying to you in Romans chapter 8 verse 9, you know, when you are born again, you receive the spirit of Christ. But that's not enough. You need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit and you need to receive the spirit of God. That is the Holy Spirit. And so... It happened with the case of the disciples. So as I was talking to you, I was saying before we, we got, you know, we got cut off. 
you know, unless you understand the process of making a cake, you just can't, you know, mix it up together and just put it in the oven. It's going to be all messed up. You'll never be able to eat a cake which is probably well done. In the same way in the Christian life, the process is I must receive the spirit of Christ. After I receive the spirit of Christ, I need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And now the Holy Spirit takes over and he directs me on the Christian life. So remember, there is no difference between a Christian who is a new Christian. And you know, receiving the spirit of Christ and receiving the, the spirit of God, it can happen at the same time. You can be, you can be, you know, you can be born again, say, you know, right now. And within the next two minutes, you can be baptized in the Holy Spirit and receive the Holy Spirit as well. You don't need to go for tuition, I mean, for some catechism or all that stuff. The moment you are born again, you are now, uh, you know, you are now, a, you are a candidate to receive the Holy Spirit. But you know, the religious church or the religious uh, world or the, or you know, what would I say? The religious church, I would say, put it the religious church. Oh, they will say, no, 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 no. You can't receive the Holy Spirit. You know, you must go through a lot of teachings. You must have a lot of, you know, knowledge. You must fill your brains with a lot of teachings. And then we have to take a test of yours. And then only you can receive the Holy Spirit. That is absolutely religious teaching. These disciples had not gone to Oxford and Cambridge. They had not gone to the cemetery or to the seminary. And so why would they have all this knowledge? They had already been told by Jesus. Uh, most of it they must have forgotten. But on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit came, what did the Holy Spirit do? Truly what Jesus said. He began to teach them and he began to remind them. So remember, my dear sisters, you don't need to think that you are in any way inferior to probably a Christian or a preacher or a disciple or somebody, you know, like the apostles or you're, you're inferior to Peter or Ant St. Anthony or, or Mother Teresa or St. Teresa or the Pope or the, or the Bishop. You are no inferior to anybody the day you are born again and you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Does that encourage you? Does that encourage you, my dear sisters? Yes, brother. Yes. I don't know yes. how many of you are encouraged by this, but I want to tell you one thing. You know, the day we received the new birth, the day we were born again, the day we had the spirit of Christ, that, and then we received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, received the power from on high. You know, you have vasta with the Lord of heaven and earth. You are a son. You are a daughter of the, of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You are in the bosom of the Father. You don't need anybody to tell you that you are something inferior to anybody. You are a child of the Most High. And you know, if this revelation comes to you, not because I'm saying you need to spend time with the Holy Spirit and He will reveal it to you. And once he reveals to you, you won't need to walk with your head down or you don't need to walk with yourself in any inferior. You are the child of the heavenly father. You are having the ability to have revelation knowledge because the Holy Spirit is the one who's going to give you the revelation knowledge. I don't know, my sisters, are you really excited about this? <laughs> Praise God. Yes, Thank Praise you, God. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, you know, if you if you really understand how blessed we are in the new covenant, you know, you will simply be excited. You know, you will you will be like, you know, just like, you know, those bees gets, you know, always attracted to the honey or for that matter, you know, a boy who's, who's not, uh, you know, who's, who's a young teenager and the girl, they always attracted the opposites attract in the same way when you are truly born again, when you are truly born again. And you have received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. You are simply going to be attracted to the word of God. Anywhere the word of God is being preached, you want to be there. Anytime, you know, the, the word of God is simply something that excites you. You know, if somebody calls you to hear God's word and somebody calls you, you know, probably to go for a party. You say, parties are always there. I want to go and get, you know, get some knowledge of the word. Even if you heard that teaching a dozen times, Still there, you will get something more, even though the topic is the same, because your spirit simply wants to receive the truth of God's word. You know, you, be, you become so sensitive to the word. It's like, you know what? Like, thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me ask you, my dear sisters, you know, Holy Spirit is so good and practical. Say, for example, every day when you get up in the morning, your breakfast is probably, you know, coffee, 
corn flakes and probably you know bread butter cheese that's your breakfast every day do you think that because you had breakfast yet today tomorrow if i give you that you will not eat that breakfast oh you'll say i had that breakfast yesterday i don't want to eat that breakfast then you'll eat it the third day you eat it the fourth day maybe you'll eat it for the next one month maybe you eat it's your practice to eat it for the whole year and you don't even blink an eye because that food that you are taking in is simply giving you nourishment you are breaking your fast it's your breakfast even if you want to have eggs every day you probably you know take that breakfast every single day of your life why because that breakfast that you are taking in is simply you know nourishing your body it's, it's taking away your hunger in the same way every time you hear god's word whether you heard it a hundred times you heard it a thousand times your ears are simply going to be opened up not these ears but the ears of your heart are going to be opened up and you're going to listen to it as though it was the first time it's just going to be nourishing your soul it's simply going to you know refresh your soul it's simply going to you know give you a revision because the holy spirit will give you something else he'll, he'll probably you know give it something a little more out of that but if you're listening it with your heart and that's exactly what the job of the holy spirit is he simply gives you an excitement you know my dear sisters i'll tell you something about myself i listen to my own teachings many times there are some teachings that i want to listen to them over and over again i've heard sometimes my own teaching sometimes even 10 times now why am i hearing this i myself sometimes get surprised and i say how did the holy spirit give me that revelation how did i get it i would not have got it otherwise when i was sharing the word the holy spirit began to tell me that now the, my job is to be only present it is the job of the holy spirit that i'm opening my mouth and he is using my vocal cords but he is the one who is inspiring me to speak so many a times when i'm speaking i just said that and now i want to hear it again because i want to take something more out of it maybe one part there and he takes you on a different path if you really dwell on that so there are sometimes little things that the holy spirit teaches if you are sensitive to listen it with your heart he will take you from a little bit of a revelation and he'll take you so deep and deep in that direction because remember my dear sisters you know the, the the spirit of god is not you know it's not like you study physics and chemistry you put two chemicals together and you see finally sodium and chloride and you get uh, it and you get salt on the table or you get oxygen and and hydrogen you get water and that's it and everybody is happy at the end of the reaction in the christian life or with the word of god it's not something that you take the word together and you you know the grace of god and your faith and that's all that you will get there is a million combinations that you can get out of this reaction when grace and faith meet together because god's you know the revelation of god's in god's kingdom or the revelation that god's word can give you is absolutely mind blowing mind blowing and that's why my dear sisters you know unless you begin to listen to the word with your heart listen it to under the anointing of the holy spirit it's simply not going to bring profit to you in in god's kingdom you know there is no doubt you know that jesus heard things from people but it was the holy spirit that imparted knowledge to jesus and trained him you know when jesus was was preaching on this earth you know a lot of people said many things about him oh they said you know what from where did he get all this wisdom where did he get all this understanding how come is you know this man is the son of joseph is the son of mary how come this man can have such knowledge and then he could have he also heard people saying this man is definitely i mean what is he doing he's doing amazing things and they are now confused based on his earthly roots and now based on what he's speaking and what he's doing in the same way my dear sisters there are many times today people will begin to remind you of your old roots they will say you were like this before this is the way we know you are this is the way you messed up your life this is the language you used to speak this is the way you used to behave yourself but today when they begin to tell you i know you just tell them that that man already died that vincent already died this is the new vincent so in the same way when i begin to receive the uh, the spirit of christ and i receive the spirit of god through the baptism of the holy spirit i am absolutely recreated the holy spirit is the captain of my life he is the one who is imparting to me knowledge he is the one who is giving me revelation knowledge he is the one who is taking me into a deeper intimacy with the lord and with each passing day more and more revelations that 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 i'm that i'm receiving 
help me to make my 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 intimacy with Christ deeper and deeper and stronger. I don't know, my sister brothers, whether you're really understanding this. The Holy Spirit is really teaching us. I don't know why we, we, are, we are very less in number, but I believe you are blessed if you're getting this, this information so that you will understand the process. You know, Jesus received his wisdom and knowledge by direct revelation from the Spirit of God. He was not taught by people. Do you think that anybody could, on, on this earth, before Jesus came, was there anyone who had such deep knowledge of the word? Was there a Bible there? In fact, you and I today have got the Bible. We got the written word of God because the Holy Spirit wrote it and we only have to go to the word and we have to you know, ask the Holy Spirit to give us that revelation. We are not doing anything supernatural or we are not doing anything extraordinary. We are just going to the written word of God. Preachers today are just taking the word of God and as the Spirit teaches them, they are teaching the word of God. But in the case of Jesus, he only had the Old Testament. He only had the Torah. He had books of Moses. He had the law with him. But all this wisdom, all these things that he was saying, he was being taught by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit began to teach him after his baptism by, by John the Baptist in the, in the River Jordan. So Jesus was not, you know, did not commit any sin. So Jesus did not have to, have to be born again. Jesus was already now a recipient of the Holy Spirit on the day of his baptism. But all the other people, they could not be born again until Jesus, the spotless lamp of God, went to the cross, died on the cross, took all our sins, rose again on the third day, and people believed that he rose again from the dead. They made him the Lord of their life. And then on the day of Pentecost, they received the anointed Holy Spirit. They received the power from on high. And now when they received the power from on high, now the, you and I are in the position to, you know, receive that revelation knowledge. We are able to preach. It's not our wisdom. We don't have any extra degrees here. I have never gone to seminary. I have not done a PhD. I have not done any thesis on the word of God. I have not been taught by anybody. I have only aligned the Holy Spirit to teach me. And the same thing applies to you, my dear sisters. If you spend time with the Holy Spirit, you spend time with the word of God. You ask the Holy Spirit after you are baptized in the Holy Spirit. He is the one who's going to teach you. Yes, there will be preachers. You can listen to them. They will give you the revelation that they receive. But don't be satisfied with the revelation of the preacher. The preacher can give you a revelation only this much. But the Holy Spirit can give you an ocean of revelation. And that ocean of revelation will only happen when you decide to spend time one-on-one -on -one with the Holy Spirit. Are you with me, my dear sisters? Are you really understanding what the Holy Spirit is teaching us right now? Yes, brother. Praise God. Praise, ah, praise God. Jesus. Praise God. You know, there is none of us who are excused to say, you know, well, why these preachers are preaching so much? Why are they experience so many things? I mean, every time some preacher, we say, wow, that was wonderful. You know, when sometimes some preachers are preaching, people hear that and they begin to say, wow, brother, wow. Is the preacher supposed to preach to make people wow him? Is it the is it the wow of the people that is going to encourage the preacher? No. Yes. It is the Holy Spirit who is giving the preacher because he's spending time with the word of God. In the same way, if the wow is coming when you are listening to a preacher, how much will the wow be when the Holy Spirit begins to teach you directly? Yeah. <laughs> It will be only wow, 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 wow. Every moment will be a wow, wow, wow when you sit with the Holy Spirit. Isn't it, my dear sisters? Yes, sir. Yes. Praise God. Yes, God. Praise God. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. And you know, God does, God does not have favorites. He has no partiality. He doesn't give only the Holy Spirit to the preachers. He has given his Holy Spirit to every single person. Every single person, you should desire it. You should desire that, that intimacy with the Lord. And you know, my dear sisters, you know, Jesus had been learning, but he was not learning through men. He was not learning through men. It is the Holy Ghost that was his teacher. In the same way, every born again believer has to now learn from the Holy Spirit. It has to be the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And you know, the Holy Spirit is made available to every single person. I mean, nobody on this planet Earth can ever say that, you know, I don't want, I, I, you know, I can manage on my own. I'm listening to, I'm going to church. I'm, I'm belonging to this ministry. My leader of the ministry is teaching me. 
this preacher is teaching me. I am very happy with every day coming to hear God's word. I tell you, my dear sisters, even if you are belonging to a ministry, even if you are hearing the word of God, praise God for that. You have got some more revelation. But please don't be satisfied with the preacher or your leader's uh, revelation. You know, the Holy Spirit is your teacher. He can teach you so much more. So much more. You know, I, as I told you that scripture, which we were just discussing a little bit earlier, in John chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit shall teach you all things. The Holy Spirit shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. I'm going to put that scripture again. You know, look at the scripture. Look at the scripture. John chapter 14, verse number 26. Just look at this. You know, you know, my dear sisters, I, I sometimes when the Holy Spirit is stressing on a particular scripture and you're listening to it, you know, sometimes we say, brother, we have heard this scripture so many times. Why are you telling this again? You know, every time we are being referred by the Holy Spirit to a particular scripture, that scripture can start giving us more and more and more. What is he saying in John chapter 14 verse 26? He's saying the Holy Spirit shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. And he also said the Holy Spirit would show us things to come. I even, show, I even was talking about that the last time, if I'm not mistaken. In John chapter 16, I believe, uh, verse number 13. Yeah, verse number 13. Look at this. How bit when he, the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall speak, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. You know, my dear sisters, I don't know whether, I don't know about you, but you know, today, when you are, when you, when you probably, when we are all living on this earth today, there is so much of bad news coming. There are people who are talking about the fourth wave and fifth wave. People have already started wearing masks. Now, I was planning to go to the UK. People are saying that, you know, the cases are rising in the UK. I was planning to go on mission. But I am keeping a deaf ear to whatever I'm hearing because I said, Lord, if you have ordained me to go on that mission and whatever be the situation, I am going to go anyway unless they actually cancel the flight and I'm not able to travel. But as far as I'm concerned, my plan is still on in spite of all the negative news that is going around. Why? Because the Holy Spirit has already shown me that everything is okay. Everything is okay. The Holy Spirit will always show you things to come. Remember, if you are going out to do the Lord's work, if you are really going out, you know, to, to do kingdom work, I want to tell you one thing, my dear sisters. If you go to do kingdom work, the Holy Spirit is going to show you directions. Sometimes you are heading north. I know my sister Moira is in the car right now. But I believe that even as you are driving in that car, unless you have stopped and reached your destination, Sister Moira, but if you were driving in your car and you really are dependent on the Holy Spirit, he will take you in a path, even though you know where you're going, because he will take you to correctly. He will guide you in, in that path. And, you know, you will see wonders. Even sometimes, you know, we are probably driving a car, we are going to work, or we are going back home, or we are going to probably pick up our children, or we are just going to get groceries. If you really are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, along the way, something wonderful can happen where he can use you for, to bring glory to Jesus. Jeez, he can God. use you to bring glory to Jesus. You know, my dear sisters, the Holy Spirit has been sent to teach us the same wisdom Jesus had that made the Jews marvel at him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You know, some of the Jews began to marvel at Jesus because of all the things he said. I don't know how many of you know that when Jesus spoke, some of the Jews began to say, this man is the son of Joseph, he's the son of Mary. How come he got all this knowledge? But the good news is, my dear sisters, the same Holy Spirit who began to speak through Jesus, the same Holy Spirit has been sent to teach you and me the same wisdom that made the Jews marvel at Jesus. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. 
I don't know how much you're going to be encouraged by this statement, how much you're going to be excited about it. If, if, this, if this statement does not light your fire, your wood is wet. I don't know, my dear sisters, what, can, what more can you know, brighten you up? What more can excite you up? What more can stir you up? You know, the Holy Spirit has been sent to us today. We are in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You know, there were three ministries altogether. The ministry of the Father, that is before Jesus came. Then the Son, the ministry of Jesus. And after Jesus went to the Father, we are in the third and final stage of the ministry of the Trinity. We are in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And the same Holy Spirit that was speaking to Jesus has been made available to you and me. And when you and I open our mouth, he will simply show up you know, in his class and people around us who are listening will just marvel at the wisdom through which we are speaking. But the wisdom and the glory and the honor should never go to the preacher, but it should always go to the Holy Spirit. Praise you know, you know, my dear sister, this wisdom, you know, which I'm talking about, it has to be drawn out by faith after we spend time and, you know, with the word and in prayer. If you're not spending time with the word in prayer, you're not spending time with the Holy Spirit, you're not spending time with in intimacy with, with the Lord, you're just, you know, probably, okay, let's go to that Bible class, you know, no preparation, no notes, just listen one year. By the time, you know, the preacher, whatever he has said, is already blown with the wind. Then you come to that class, you come to the name. It's like, you know, it's just, it's just like you're going through the motions of life. And that's why, you know, unless you are committed to the word, you're spending time with the word, whatever you have heard, you're putting it into practice. You are now beginning to put, make applications of what you heard and start using that word and putting it into practice. It will not help you. You will just come and do it like an activity. Like, you know, we have breakfast. Okay, finish my breakfast. Now what we'll eat for lunch. Now let me cook, go to the grocery. Let me cook. It doesn't work that way. I need to take my lunch I need to take my breakfast. I need to really, you know, take it in and really enjoy that meal. I really need that meal, what I'm taking in to really give me the strength and energy that I need. Otherwise, I can just eat any junk food and it will not give me any energy. On the contrary, you know, it will be just like junk food that will all be wasted in my body. But when I'm taking in the food, I'm taking it to give me the energy, to give me the strength. In the same way, when I'm hearing the word of God, what is this word that I'm hearing doing to my life? How is it changing my life? How is it changing my thinking? How is it changing the way I make decisions? How is the way I was thinking yesterday? How was I thinking on this particular subject last year? How was I thinking on this subject one year, one month ago? And how am I thinking on the same thing today? It has to be different if I'm really growing in the word. And the more time I spend in, in you know, uh, with the word in prayer and with the word of God, this wisdom is going to be drawn out from my spirit. It's going to be drawn out by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is going to be the captain of my life, taking me on the journey and allowing me to appropriate, allowing me to suck out all that particular wisdom, which is already on the inside. Remember in Colossians 2, 9 and 10, Jesus said the fullness of God, the fullness of the Godhead is already in Christ and Christ is inside of us. So everything of God is on the inside of us and we can draw it out by faith when we spend time with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, you know, my dear sisters, since we are few today, I, I will rather not go further. I just did a revision of what we learned the last time. And I pray that you will listen to this again. Go back to the previous teaching and, you know, get it together so that when we come the next time, I believe we, we started up to verse number 16. Let's go from 17 and 18 onward. There's so much the Holy Spirit has to teach us on this topic. But I pray that you will do your homework. And by the time we come the next time, we will be able to do much more on this topic of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. Praise God. So, Sister Moira, would you like to close it with a prayer? Would you like to close the session with a prayer, please? Yes, Father. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord, for this session, this anointed session. Thank you, Lord, that although there were only few of us, we believe, Lord, that you had the message for the three of us present here. Thank you, Lord, 
but your Holy Spirit is working mightily in our lives. And just as the Holy Spirit that was with Jesus, giving him the wisdom and knowledge and understanding and the, and the power to go and preach and teach and heal and do miraculous wonders in, on this earth whilst he was here. You have given us that same anointed Holy Spirit. Yes, Lord. We too can go and, and be just like Jesus and do even greater works than he did as is promised, as Jesus promised us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you that you are speaking to our hearts. You are stirring up within our own spirit and that you are coming alive and helping us each and every moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We praise you, we glorify you, we give you honor. And all glory be to you. All glory be to you, Holy Spirit. When, when things are working in our lives through you, and only through you and with you, may we always only give you glory and not glorify ourselves. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Moira. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.